Joel. I'm from the Homeless Persons Club. Oh, yeah. How you going? Yeah, good thanks, Joel. That's why we're just wondering if it's sometime soon we can have a sit down and have a talk about what's yeah, going on. Yeah, enough. Mr. Noddle, throw us a dime, toss us a bone, yeah? Uh, we're not bad people, you don't have to be afraid of us. Um, we've got the same Guernsey on potentially, we're fighting for people who are experiencing disadvantage. We had some questions to ask, but even though we've sent letters asking for a meeting and eventually had to turn up to ask for a meeting, when you are provided with an opportunity to have a sit down and, and discuss these matters in a, in a grown up way, you ran away like a girl, spat the dummy and started sort of shaking your finger at us, showing more contempt. Um, well, you've been provided an opportunity and you refused it. The olive branch was extended and you turned it away. Uh, we'll have more to say about this, but um, we say shame on you, yeah? Because isn't a progressive outcome ideally what we're all seeking? And a way to get that progressive outcome is to sit down and talk like adults, not run away. Speak to you later. So we looked up the address for Dick Wynn and Martin Foley and apparently their, their offices are here on floor 20 and floor 22 number one Spring Street. That's what it says when you look from look them up. But when we came here, um, it's that shell game. They're not here anymore. So the information out there, um, transparency, it's been muddied again, yeah? Anyway, we've got a new address. Number eight, Nicholson Street. And I think by the time we get there, all the uh, desks will have been packed up. Um, Cone of silence will be down and no one will be prepared to talk to us, but at least we'll go along and attempt to sort of um, uh, make contact, yeah, because we've tried through emails, we've tried through back channels, reverends, um, Yarra City Council, all these other people who say they've got the ear of these, these Muppets. Um, but so far, until this point, they've dismissed our invitation or request for a meeting and we understand that they don't want to legitimize us the union however our concerns are legitimate so whether they want to legitimize us or not we that's irrelevant to us we want to make sure that these legitimate concerns uh, have a table provided where they can be discussed and if not then uh, government has failed in its obligations again yeah Human rights, yeah. A bit of freedom of speech. You got some freedom of speech in there. So what brings us to this building of the people? Yeah, where the politicians who have been elected to serve us hide. What brings us here? Well, we know the budget's been handed down. Potentially just one submarine. We know the white paper for defence came out recently and they want to buy all these submarines. It costs $11 billion each. One of those submarines, one of those $11 billion could end homelessness in Australia altogether. But it seems the government's prioritised killing people ahead of its human right obligations. Is that going to end up here? No, it's all right. Yeah to meet people's human rights and, and have a society that doesn't have this disparity in wealth that's tearing at our social fabric. And we've been here plenty of times, we've actually slept on the streets, we've slept on the steps here of Parliament to raise awareness. Uh, Richard did a hunger strike here that went for 90 days. Um, not one politician came out to see him. So I know that they look down on us with contempt and that's really sad, yeah, because generations of us have really, we've built this country. The Victorian state motto is let's move, you know, we move forward together and that's the only way we can move forward is if we move forward together. If we're leaving somebody behind, 
we've left someone behind and that's not good enough yeah we're a prosperous nation and that's not just in money we're prosperous in our our richness of community and that seems to sort of be to have been squandered over the last sort of 20 or 30 years where instead of uh, giving a, another human a hand up it shifted to that give another human a hand out and let the charities deal with it. Now on Bendigo Street at the moment where the HPU is involved in a peaceful political action we're seeking those stakeholders who are involved with the unused properties to meet with us. So I've been going around today in the city so far I haven't got any politicians pinned down give me time but we did get Noddle, and um, he ran like a scaredy cat. No offence to cats. Um, you know, and that's frustrating because you'd think that he'd want to have a discussion about what's going on, yeah? Put his case on the table. But he probably knows that we've got a really strong case ourselves and that his case would just come up as being excuses, yeah? and misdirection and, and blame and, you know, wishy-washy sort of, you're standing in the way of people and we know there's thousands of other un unused empty houses. So, we'll keep at it. We're gonna keep on going to a couple of different government departments and offices today. Um, if we get kicked out of number two Bendigo Street, We'll be back here on the steps of Parliament. And we know that um, probably won't come out and speak to us, but the people, the rest of the community are gonna see and they're gonna hear our voice. No longer the unheard voice, it's the catch cry of the union. We're gonna make a noise, yeah? We're gonna let people know how much you failed us, how much you're failing them. And that wouldn't need to happen if you actually sat down and had a talk with us and worked through this. Isn't that what we really want? Sort of an end to homelessness, an end to disparity and wealth. That's what the people want. But so far it just seems that the politicians want to feather their nests and get in bed with corporations and banks and West Farmers and Gina Reinhardt and avoid the big cash cow in the room, you know, corporate tax avoidance. You know, they want to go out and skin the education system and the health system and the houseless, you know, homelessness services and you can only skin it so far, yeah? You're building more prisons at the moment, yeah? We've seen the population of prisons jump 40.5% uh, in the last decade, although crime has only gone up 1.6% in the last decade. So we've seen this shift where people who are homeless are ended up in prison and it seems to be the unofficial uh, housing policy. Uh, we're gonna drag this out into the light, we're gonna shame you, yeah? You, it didn't need to be like this. All you needed to do was come to the table. But we're gonna join some dots now, get the other people, the rest of the broader community outraged, as outraged as we are. So, um, yeah, I guess as predicted or as suspected, we've arrived here at number eight Nicholson Street and uh, to see Mr. Foley or Mr. Wynn, our minister, the both ministers, because uh, we went to number one Spring Street and we were told that they'd moved here. So when we arrived here, uh, no luck. Apparently it's that shell game again. There ain't no Minister Foley here, and there ain't no Minister Dick Wynn here. So, I don't know, we'll, we'll keep following the bouncing ball, uh, for a while at least, because uh, we really want to have a, a word about what's going on, and being that this is your portfolio, uh, the Minister's portfolios, uh, there's a need, an urgency even to sit down and, and discuss these matters about uh, empty public assets, about uh, the failed 
government position on homelessness, about the growing number of our brothers and sisters who are homeless ending up in private prisons, um, or the substandard care provided to them by charities and uh, organisations that are profiteering from people experiencing disadvantage. So we're going to come back, we'll find you eventually. Um, you might think you're above the people but you can't hide from the people, we'll find you and we'll have these discussions. Uh, one bright note, we did actually get some traction. Someone came down from the Department of Human Services and sort of we've initiated a conversation there where um, they're prepared potentially to meet with members of the Homeless Persons Union of Victoria and sit down and discuss what's going on on Bendigo Street. So it's not. It's not a minister whose portfolio it is, it's a sort of lower echelon monkey. Um, but it's a start, yeah, because ultimately we're seeking a progressive outcome. We'd like answers, hopefully they might be able to provide some, we doubt it. Um, we doubt if even ministers can provide an answer at the moment. But we'll keep on following it up, we've extended the Olive Branch on numerous occasions and uh, so far Mainly it's been rebutted, so uh, we'll keep on trying because that's our, that's our mandate to sort of uh, end homelessness uh, or ensure that public housing is available to people experiencing homelessness or to ensure that public assets that are, have been earmarked for people experiencing homelessness are actually made available to them and don't just sit there unused in the middle of a humanitarian crisis. We'll be back.